<laughs> the shadow knows. <laughs> Again comes radio's strangest adventurer, The Shadow. Mystery man who strikes terror into the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today on the air, Blue Coal brings you The Shadow's latest adventure, Hounds in the Hills. In just a moment, The Shadow's exciting adventure will begin. Meanwhile, I have an important message for everybody. We are now in the midst of the most treacherous season of the entire year. But you can protect your family's health during this danger period by burning blue coal. For blue coal gives you clean, uniform, healthful heat all winter long. And its harmless blue coloring is your guarantee of better heat at less cost. So when you order fuel, insist on blue coal. It's Pennsylvania's finest anthracite. Your nearest blue coal dealer will be glad to send you a trial ton. Phone him tomorrow. High in the pine-clad hills of North Carolina, where backwoods living is neighbor to palatial winter homes, there is a haunted mansion, relic of former grandeur. With no visible means of support, old Sadie, haggard, half-demented creature, and Jake, a hunchback son, live in one wing of the dilapidated old house. A pack of great, vicious, crossbreed hounds guards the old place from intruders. It is early evening. In the dim half-light, Two figures, led by one of the hounds, approach the house. I don't like it here. I want to go home. Let's get in, little boy. You ain't afraid of my little dog. Yes, I am. I'm afraid of your dog, and I'm afraid of you, too. I want to go home to my mother. I don't want to go with you. I kiss my dog wherever I go. You won't hurt you. Not so long as you're with me, you won't. <laughs> and I'll tell him what he'd do to you if he got you alone, Jakey. My name isn't Jakey. My name is Jakey Nelson. Mm -hmm. And if you don't let me go home, my mother will be worried. Now, now, Jakey, don't be scared, old Sadie. I'm your mother. Ah, old Sadie's your mother. <laughs> Along the rim of a high cliff. If 
washes out so that a slip on the gravel starts to slide right over the cliff. And you mean to say four boys have been lost there in two weeks? Yes. Four? Yes, but doesn't it strike you there might be something more than just fate causing the disappearance of these children? Well, but what? That I don't know. Gary, I'd like to look at this clip. <laughs> See how the trail washes out down the cliff? Yes, yes. That's a thousand feet straight down there. The river at the bottom. Yeah. I reckon the current must carry the bodies away. We haven't found a trace of them. I don't suppose there's any doubt about what happened to the boys. No, Miss Lynn. When Bobby Mina disappeared last week, we found a ball he'd been playing with. You call that conclusive evidence? Well, this morning we snared up Dickie Nelson's cap that was caught on some shrubbery part way down the mountain. Mm. Of course, some of the colored folk around here think ghost done it. Ghost? Yeah. See, they was howling last night about the time Dickie was lost here. What kind of howling, Sheriff? Down to find those two. They say they heard it the three times the other boys were lost. But you know how they are. Colored folks up here in the hills is superstitious. Yes. But what kind of a howl does a ghost make in this part of the country, Sheriff? And that's what I asked. About near they could describe it, it was like a dog howling. Hound dog. Well, I've generally found that a dog howling means a dog. Perhaps I'd better reverse the usual procedure. The dog trailing a man. It's all very mysterious, Lamont. Yes, it is, Margot. Will you excuse me for a moment, Sheriff? Yes, yeah, certainly, Mr. Cranston. Margot, I think the shadow will look into this mystery. But how? Go back to the house, Margot. I wireless you. I need help. In my invisible state as the shadow, I'm going to follow the clue of the dog. Let's see what it leads me. <laughs> I want to go home. Don't cry, Dickie. Don't cry. Huh? What's that? Who are you? I've come here to help you. You're Dickie Nelson, aren't you? Yes, sir, but... Who are you? It's so dark, I can't see you. You don't need to see me, Dickie. Pretend I'm just a shadow. But you can hear me. Yes, sir, but I want to go home. Here, here, you've got to be a man, Dickie. I'll try to get you home. But you've got to stop crying and help me. I'm scared, that's why. Haven't you got a handkerchief? No, sir. Here, use my handkerchief. Thank you. Now dry your eyes and wipe your nose. I want you to tell me something. Yes, sir. Are there any other boys here? Yes, sir, three of them. How did you get here? I believed a ghost story, Dickie. And I looked for a ghost who howled like a hound. And then I just walked. But I didn't find a ghost. How did I find what I expected to find? A dog. Didn't they see you? No. Didn't old Sadie or Jake see you? No, it's dark in here. But even with the light on, people can't see me because I've learned how to make them think they don't see me. I blind their eyes to me. How? Never mind how. You must believe it and don't be afraid of me. I'm your friend. Yes, sir. Trust me, Dickie. Perhaps I can find a way to get you and the other boys out of here. Yeah. Find these kids here, they'll hang at you, crazy old fool. Hey, now don't you test my baby. He's my Jakey. Uh, he's you before you came a hunchback. If you kill him, you'll be killing yourself. He's you, Jake. You keep away from me. Don't you touch me. Jake, don't touch that boy. Who's that? I hear this too. Give me that lamp. I hear this too, Jake. Uh, nobody's in here but us. Us and the kids. He got out. No, I'm still here. His voice? Hmm. Ain't nobody with him. Yeah, I hear it too. Well, that's nothing, Jake. I'm always hearing voices. <laughs> and now you're hearing them. Ah, we're both crazy. <laughs> uh, reckon it ain't so crazy a voice can scare me. If I'm crazy like you, then voices ain't real. 
Now put this kid out of the way, and then I'll get the other. No, no, stop. Please don't hit me with that stick. No, no, no. Put down that stick, Jake. Put it down. Now. I ain't scared of voices in eight rails. I said drop it. Who hit me? Brooks. Look at that place on my wrist, Brooks. (laughs) Well, Jake, I've been hearing voices for a long time, but I ain't never been hit by one. You done it. Oh, I did not. I wasn't near you. Then it was the kid. I never moved. Well, then who? I hit you, Jake. Now I'm going to give you a chance to save yourself. Let this boy go. Bring the other boys here. I'll take them home. No. No, they're mine. They're mine. They're just you know. I'll get rid of them my way. Please help me. I want to go home. Trust me, Dickie. There's only one thing for me to do now. Jake, this is your last chance. All right. Who's that? You reckon that somebody looked for the kids? Definitely it is. Jake, it must be them. The Duke and Slim coming to hide out. Ah, uh, listen. Ah, uh, it's him. Oh, Jake, he'll kill us both. He knows about my baby. Well, what he don't know won't hurt him. Shut the door to the kids' room and lock it. Uh, hurry up, Jake, let him in. But don't say a word about my baby. Don't worry. Uh, Maybe I'm crazy, too, but I ain't that crazy. Well, what took you so long, Jake? Hello, Duke. Come in, Slim. Hurry up. Shut the door. Okay, Duke. Yeah, what a dump this is. It's better than being in jail up north. If we didn't have this hideout, that's where you'd be. Oh, hello, old Sadie. <laughs> Come in, Duke. <laughs> Shut up. That half-witted old dame talks too much. Hey, you staying for a while, Duke? What's it to you? I don't care. Oh, lay off the guy, Slim. Jake, and you too, old Sadie. Yeah? We're taking a little rest away from the cops. See? Turn the dogs loose in the yard around the house so they can chew up anybody that comes here looking for us. Go on, Jake. Do it now. All right, Duke. Just a minute, Jake. Who's that? Somebody's in here, Duke. <laughs> The voice again, Jake. Yes, they can't hear it unless they're crazy, too. The voice again. Yes, Jake, that same voice. And the Duke can hear it, too. Can't you, Duke? Say, what's going on here? Who is that? I tell you, it's in here, Duke. Who's playing tricks on me? Duke. Did you ever hear of the shadow? The shadow? I have, Duke. I know that's the guy that talks to you, but you can't see him. Shut up, you fool. Yes, yeah, shadow. I've heard about you. I never believed what I heard, though. You can believe it now. Listen, Duke. I'm here for only one purpose. To save the lives of four little children. I don't believe him. It's a lie. Shut up. I'm handling this. Go ahead, Shadow. Go ahead. Talk some more. All right. Old Sadie and Jake there put you in a tough spot. How, Shadow? Old Sadie is crazy. She is. Well, shall we say... Adventure continues in just a moment. Meanwhile, I'd like to say a few words about a subject that's uppermost in everyone's mind these days, 
how to save money. Large savings in cooking and heating costs can be made by switching to blue coal. For blue coal is the perfect home fuel. It is the best grade of Pennsylvania anthracite. And anthracite is the fuel that furnaces, cooking stoves, and parlor heaters in New England were designed to use. Blue coal gives off a steady, clean heat. It lasts longer and burns down to a fine, powdery ash without giving off smoke or grime common to many other fuels. Blue coal's cleanliness will appeal to New England housewives. For housekeeping is greatly simplified when blue coal is used because with this dependable fuel, you not only have a more comfortable home, but a cleaner house inside and out. These are the reasons why blue coal is so popular in Portucket, Rhode Island. Sales in Portucket this winter are 12% ahead of sales for the same period a year ago. Here's another point. You buy American when buying blue coal. It is mined and prepared in Pennsylvania by the Glen Alden Coal Company, especially for home use. So for economy and cleanliness, start using blue coal tomorrow. Order it by name. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer. You'll find him listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. Yeah. So when something moves, let him have it. I get it. Hey, but 
How will we know when we get him? He'll come down, Slim. Oh, you missed, Slim. Take your time. Hey, what's that? I thought I saw a branch move. We're shooting at the shadow, Jake. And when he's unconscious again, we can see him all right. And then... <laughs> Didn't do so good yourself, though. Uh, those dogs are hungry. Yeah. I bet they look nice from up in the tree, waiting for their breakfast. How can you shoot him if he can't see him? Shut up, Jake. Now, take your time, Slim. Good morning, Milk. He's there. Good morning, Shadow. I hope you slept well. Oh, yeah. And you? Now, watch close, Slim. Yeah, yeah. Would it be too much for me to ask how are the little boys? They're all right, Shadow. So far, that's good. Yeah, but I'll get rid of them. Slim, get around the other side of the tree. I think he's low in the tree, behind the trunk. Okay, Duke. We're taking care of you first, Shadow. You know too much. <laughs> well, what's funny, Shadow? I'm laughing at you, Duke. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you laugh different when I get my hands on you. Why don't you come up here? Try it. I don't have to. You'll come down. You'll have a long wait. Oh, yeah. Can't you say anything but, oh, yeah? You're really quite stupid, Duke. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm smart enough to get you out of that tree. Good. I was getting rather bored. Ah, oh, shut up. Hey, Slim. Go back to the house and get an axe. This tree ain't too big to cut down. Very ingenious. Yeah, but the dog. It ain't safe to leave without Jake. The dogs, they won't touch you. They're after the shadow. And Jake will keep him here. Sure, sure. I'll keep him here, sure. And hurry back, Slim. Now, Slim. Okay, Duke. I don't let them dogs come after me. Jake will keep the dogs here. Okay, watch it. Uh, hurry back. Uh, hey, Jake. Call the dogs off. They're going after Slim. Yeah, they don't like him. They call it back. Call the dog. Oh, Jake. The dogs are attacking him. They're going to eat him. I'll shoot him, Slim. Guess you, you didn't shoot him soon enough, Duke. Well, Jake, your dog's got slim. I'm afraid you've lost most of them. Yes. Yeah. Ma will be awful mad. There's only Big Tom left. But the Duke will shoot him. No, he won't. His gun's empty. Let's him go up that tree. <laughs> Big Tom didn't get him. Now you're both up in the tree, ain't you? No, Jake, I'm standing right here behind you. Now, do what I tell you. Go over to that tree and tie Big Tom to it. So that the Duke can't get down. Why should I? You want to get those kids out of the way, don't you? Duke won't let you. Yeah. He won't, maybe. Yeah, he won't let me, maybe. I, I won't tell him what I'm going to do. Jake, hold off this dog. Tie him up, do you hear me? Tie him up. No, not to my tree, you dope. Take him away. Listen to me. Don't tie him there, you half Well, Duke, we change places. I'll get you if it's the last thing I do, Jack. You're going to have plenty to do before we meet again. Jake, come back here. Yeah. You'll yeah. have plenty of time to think about that. Here are some men that may help you out. Who are they? My Lord, what happened here? I don't know, sir. See, this is the hunchback, Jake. Hello, Jake. Duke's up in the tree. Yeah, get out, Sheriff. Ow! Oh. Reckon that dog won't attack anyone else. You killed him. Now, if our friend will come down out of the tree, I'll be delighted to put a pair of handcuffs onto him. I've been looking for him and his partner for some time. From the looks of things, I won't need to put the cuffs on his partner. Well, Marco, you better go back to the car. All right. Yes, I think I will. I, I only wanted to see if... Yes, I'll go back. All right, men. Let's take him away. Margo. Margo. Oh. Oh, Lamont. Lamont, are you all right? Yes, but don't speak my name here. Darling, I was so frightened when I got your wireless message. I, I thought it was the end. So did I. Are the boys all right? Yes, all the boys are safe. They've been taken into town. A deputy sheriff took old Sadie along. Vicki Nelson is in one of the cars up the road waiting. Oh, Lamont, I feel so sorry for that poor old woman. So do I, Margo. She's demented. We must see that she's placed in an institution, not a prison. A place where she can satisfy her mother love mania with dolls instead of other people's children. Go to the car, Margo. I'll meet you there. What are we waiting for?
waiting for, Miss Lane. I want to go home to my mother. Just a minute, Dickie. I'm expecting someone. Who? Oh, here he comes now. Hello, Margot. Hello, Lamont. Who is this young man? This is Dickie Nelson. Dickie Lamont Cranston. Hello, Mr. Cranston. Well, Dickie, I hear you had quite an adventure last night. Yes. A kind man came to my room at that terrible house. But I couldn't see him. Well, maybe you dreamt it, Dickie. Supposing we keep it a secret. Just between us three. Yes, I think that's a good idea. All right. But it was a swell dream. <laughs> And here is John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert, with some interesting information for you. Thank you, Ken Roberts. Good evening, friends. The health and comfort of your family during this period of widely varying temperatures depends to a great extent on whether your heating plant delivers steady, even heat when you need it. And the efficiency of your heating plant depends upon the proper use of furnace dampers. Here are some helpful hints on the proper use of these dampers. First, the turn or the smoke pipe damper should never be used for day-to-day -day control of heat. This damper should always be kept as nearly closed as possible without retarding the free burning of your fire. If you do not have automatic thermostat control of your furnace, the everyday control of heat should be left to your check damper, that trap-like damper located on your chimney pipe and the ash pipe damper. To get more heat through your house, close the check damper and open the ash pit damper. Always remember, when one is closed, the other should be open. If the house is warm enough, close the ash pit and open the check damper. The proper location of these dampers is important. The check damper should be between the chimney and turn damper, the latter being between the check damper and the furnace. If the dampers are in this position, they are properly placed. And if operated in the manner that I have just explained, you should not experience any trouble in maintaining an even temperature in all parts of your home. However, if you do have trouble with your furnace, phone your nearest blue coal dealer and ask him to send a John Barclay serviceman to your home. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. And friends, take Mr. Barclay's tip. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer. Have him send a John Barclay serviceman to your home tomorrow. <laughs> I've just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow Magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> As you sow evil, so shall you reap. Crime does not pay. A shadow knows. <laughs> America's finest anthracite will again present another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen. And be sure to burn blue coal, the solid fuel for solid comfort. Mm -hmm.